Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God. So we established that when you don't speak the truth, God withholds blessings from you and he hides his face from you, all right? So um, in James 5 and 16, it tells you, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. So when you confess your faults one to another, that's when you're healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So that's also, that's you praying for God for your forgiveness. And this is you confessing your faults to the people you hurt. And you shall know the truth and this truth shall make you free. You'll be free when you confess your sins. You speak the truth, right? Because the prayers of a righteous man avails much. Now, you got to know in Proverbs, right? 8 and 7. This is God. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. So anything that's not the truth coming out your mouth is wickedness and it's an abomination. Whether Because it, it'll be fraud, it'll be deceit, it'll be manipulation, it'll be hurtful words, it'll just be things that are not true. You get me? If someone tells you even constructive criticism, if it's truth, then that's something you need to work on yourself. It's not to hurt you, it's to better you. So there's some truth that hurts and there's it's just for your betterment. Now, this is what he wants you to know, Isaiah 59 and 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear, because you're not speaking the truth. Um, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholded good things from you when you don't confess the truth, right? Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And he always told you the truth. Satan is the one who lies. 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fare less by any means. As the serpent beguiled Eve a lie through his subtility. You saw your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity is truth. Now, into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou has redeemed me, God of truth. So God of truth is one of his titles. Right? And Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish, accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I sent it. And what does God say? For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. So anything that's not the truth coming out of your mouth is wickedness. Okay, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8 and 32, confess your faults one to another. And this, like if we, 1 John 9, 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When does God cleanse you from all unrighteousness? When do you get this healing that's talked about in James, um, what is it, James... 5 and 16, that you may be healed when you confess your faults one to another, right? That's what happens when you confess. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's when you're cleansed from all unrighteousness, when you confess your sins to each other and you're healed. Until then, you're not healed. God will not hear you. He hides his face from you because of your sins of lying. In the beginning with Eve, that's a big sin. Now, Isaiah 65 and 16, that he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. There you have his title again, God of truth. And he that swears in the earth shall swear by the God of truth because the former troubles are forgotten. Why are the former troubles are forgotten? Because when you confess your sins, God heals you and cleanses you and removes them from you and he remembers your sin no more. So the person who you sin against, if they don't forgive you, then they're in trouble with God for their unforgiveness. But you, repenting God, takes away your troubles from that sin. He, forget, he remembers your sin no more. He cleanses you and he heals you. And because they are hid from my eyes, because he hides those sins from his eyes, he remembers them no more. See? That's a real repentance. That's a real deliverance. Psalms 40 and 11. Withhold not thy tender mercies from me. How do you get your tender mercies from God? 
withholding from you, when you don't show mercy, when you show judgment without mercy, God judges you without mercy and he holds mercies away from you. And when you don't tell the truth. So withhold not, that's why in this prayer someone say, withhold not thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindnesses and thy truth, what? The truth continually preserve me. So you have to confess your truth, you have to speak truth, and you have to walk in truth. We'll get there. Because right here, it tells you to walk in truth. In 3 John 1 and 3, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walks in truth. So remember how I said your public life and your private life has to be the same. Everything, you got to walk in truth. You have to speak truth. You have to live in truth. All right? So let thy love and kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. That's Psalms 40 and 11. Now Psalms 103 and 3. Who forgives all thy iniquities when? Who heals all thy diseases when you're doing what? Truth. Speaking truth, confessing your truth to one another. 2 Corinthians 2 and 10. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive you also. Because there's some people, it's hard for them to forgive. I get that. But this is, this is what God's saying to forgive. For I forgive anything to whom I forgive it for your sakes. Forgive I it in the person of Christ. So if you can't forgive anybody for any reason, you forgive them for the person you are in Christ. Why? Because Christ died for the sins of the world. Because Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So we got peace by, by him dying for our sins. Our chastisement for us to, to be, you know, for God to put us in the lake of fire for, for committing sins and breaking his commandments. He died for that. And hit, with his stripes, we are healed. When we do what? We have to confess the truth. And if you can't forgive somebody, you can forgive them in, in the person you are in Christ. If, you, if anything, that because Christ died for our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. He got a beaten for us to live. He got beat unto death. That's why it says, who heals all our diseases. Now, if to whom you forgive anything, I forgive you also. How you, For if I forgive anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes, forgave I it in the person of Christ. So the person of Christ you are, you're going to forgive the person no matter what they've done to you because Christ died for everyone's sins. Everyone, the whole world's sins, right? Now, if the person does not forgive you for you confessing your sins to them, they're in trouble with God. Now, Matthew 6 and 14 to 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's why I said, even confess your faults to one another, speak your truth, whether they forbear or they... They hear you or they forbear you. At least you can get your healing and your cleansing and your deliverance from God. And that God will remember your sins no more. But they will be in trouble with God because they never forgave men their trespasses. Right? And they have sinned because all have sinned and come short of the glory. So God wouldn't forgive their sins. Because he wants all his creation to learn righteousness. Now, Galatians 3 and 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Do you. You forgive. Just even as Christ has forgave you and took a beating and he was his stripes, by his stripes you were healed. You forgive them in the person you are in Christ. Now, Proverbs 6 and 16 these six things does the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. Remember he says, um, what's an abomination to his lips? Now, Proverbs 6 and 17, a proud look and a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Now, didn't I say that people who are afraid of something are fearful are liars? That's why it says in Revelations 21 and 8, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers, because sorcery is a lie, it's not the truth. 
you're doing illusions, confusions, and dominance and control is not the truth. Mer um, whoredoms is not the truth because you're not living with someone in truth. You're committing adultery. Idolatry is not the truth because there's only one God. So it all goes back to a lie. That's why I said, it's, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All right. So that's why I said, I said in my haste, all men are liars. Because you are going to be a liar at some point because you're going to speak on saying things that you don't have the understanding of or the knowledge of. So you speak, you're going to speak with lies because you don't know how you, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You're going to speak what you've been told or speak what you've learned, whether it be a truth or whether it be a lie. But you have to learn from God what is the truth. Right? Now, John 13 and 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. And we're going to talk about a lying tongue and lips of truth, right? Now, be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. All right. We read that now. Luke 17 and 3, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him rebuke him it tells you to rebuke him so you tell him hey you did this and if he repent forgive him forgive him you move on in 2 timothy's 2 and 25 in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if god pre-adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth how do you get repentance when you acknowledge the truth you acknowledge the truth of what you've done you speak the truth you walk in truth now, John 13 and 14, if I then your Lord and master have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. You better forgive. Galatians 5 and 15, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed of one another. So if you don't, you know, if you don't forgive, you know, you're going to be biting and devouring one another. You're going to be fighting against one another. Let Galatians 5 and 26, let us not be desirous of vain glory. You know, walking your private life and your, 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 your public life is totally different. Provoking one another, envying one another. Because envy is a lie. Because people who envy you, they won't tell you. That's done in secret. For, Psalms 84 and 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. To who? The Lord will give grace and glory. To who, though? No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Your private life and your, your your public life have to be the same. That's walking uprightly. That's walking in truth. Psalms 40 and 11. Withhold not thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindnesses and thy truth continually preserve me. You won't get things withholding from you when you're walking uprightly and you're walking in truth. Now, Psalms 21 and 2. Thou hast given him his heart's desire. When do you get your heart's desire from God? And has not withholding the request of his lips when you're walking and you're walking in truth and you're speaking truth. Now, Job 42 and 2. I know that thou can do everything and and that no thought can be withholding from thee. So God knows all your thoughts. Now, Job 22 and 7. Thou hast not given water to the, the weary to drink and thou hast withholded bread from the hungry. God will withhold things from you when you don't speak the truth. Now, a lying tongue. A proud look and a lying tongue and, head, and hands that shed innocent blood, God hates that. Now, Proverbs 26 and 28, a lying tongue hates those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. So, flattery is not the truth, it's a lie. It's deception. It works ruin. That's why God doesn't like lying lips. Now, Proverbs 21 and 6, the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. So when you lie, you seek death. All liars have their part in a lake of fire. Now Psalms 120 and 2, deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Isn't flattery a deceitful tongue? Because flattery works ruin. All right. Deliver my, that's why you should pray. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Now, Proverbs 12 and 19, the lip of truth shall be established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. 
Now, Psalms 109 and 2 for the, no, that's not what I want. So, James 3 and 6, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire. And is and it is set on fire of hell. Jeremiah seven and eight. Behold, you yet yet you trust in lying words that cannot profit. So lying words can't profit you anything. Now, what does it tell you in Psalms one nineteen and sixty three? I hate and arbor lying, but the law but thy law do I love, cause God's law is truth. Now, Psalms 119 and 29, remove me from the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. Now, Proverbs 17 and 7, excellent speech becomes not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. So people who lie a lot, they're not going to have excellent speech. Now, Psalms 31 and 6, I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I, but I trust in the Lord. You'll trust God's word and not the lies people tell you. Now, Ephesians 4 and 25 tells you, Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members of one another. That's why we're supposed to confess our truth to one another. Proverbs 13 and 5, If you're righteous, you're going to hate lying. A righteous man hates lying. A righteous man hates lying. But a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. Because when you lie, it's because you're, shaming, you're afraid to be put to shame. Yep, you're ashamed of something as well. You're fearful and you're ashamed of something. Proverbs 10 and 18, He that hides hatred in lying lips, and he that others a slander is a fool. Now, truth. Proverbs 8 and 7, What does God tell you? For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Malachi 2 and 6, The law of truth was in his mouth. And iniquity was not found in his lip. Anything other than truth you're speaking out of your mouth, it's wickedness, it's an abomination, it's iniquity, it's deceit. He walks with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. How do you turn how do you walk in peace and equity? And how do you turn many away from iniquity when your mouth is found with the law of truth and you speak the truth and you walk in truth? Now John three um, the the third book of John one and three for I, for I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee even as thou walks in truth. Now, how do you get sanctified and set free? John seventeen and seventeen. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Zechariah eight and sixteen. These are the things that you shall do. Speaky man, speaky. Every man, the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. All right? So I hope this helped you um, to confess your truth to one another. Stay blessed.